Can I have my seven men again, please? You know, guys, in a time like this with everything shaking, Russia, Ukraine, in the world, a lot of things happening. Hello? With a lot of stuff happening, we can pray for protection. We can pray that God will do really a great thing in the name of Jesus. Amen? Can we just take a moment so that God will help five men to come to the front? Um, any, any man, any man available, any man. No man, ni Lawrence is not available. That man is available. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Give them a hand. We got the breakthrough. So, I think, yes, to pray for protection, to pray for the water and to pray for bombs and missiles and all this stuff um, in civilian suburbs with with kids and babies and grannies and mothers and for no logical reason just exploding my biggest thing that i carry in my heart to pray for them is that people will not put a question mark behind god and jesus and saying this is a lot of rubbish the bible if the Bible says, commit yourself to the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And there's granny and, and grandpa and, hello, they've worked their, their whole life. They've walked with God and for their kids and their grandkids, everything is there. Next moment, they're gone. Everything gone. What they had, gone. Son somewhere in the wall, daughter, don't know if we will see her, grandchildren, don't know where they are. And looking around them, look at the world, and everything is just destroyed. And saying, where is the God of love? Where is the God that says he will protect you in all your ways? Where is the angels that he will give charge over you? And so many Christians, so many children of God that can ask such a lot of questions. If we thought we can ask half of a question, two million questions more. They could ask when see the distraction. I won't go into detail. But I'm just saying, let's pray for a supernatural work of God on the church and on the people. That they will stay with the word, even if it doesn't make sense in what they see. Even if it's horrific trauma all around them and in them and with them. That will, they will just say, God is a good, good father. Like that man who wrote that song when his, his baby, when his child died. And where a lot of people stand by faith, they stood by faith that God will do a major miracle. And then the child died. In a ministry where you see miracles, 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 miracles the whole time. And this leader, his child died. And he wrote that song, God, you're a good, good father. Let's pray that that type of miracle will be there. Amen. Over the church. With a supernatural provision, how people, what we prayed for even, and where it started to happen even, not just because of our prayer, but I believe Holy Spirit raising up a lot of people all over the world that will pray into accurate prayers for things that need to happen, and how they were testimonies about how food will just multiply. How they need certain, had certain necessities, and it will just it will just make its way through to them. But that the Christians will know how to stand in the name of Christ. In the name of Christ in those places. Hello? Hello? With accurate, with accurate, accurate theology. Because some will say, you know, it's just the will of the Father. We need to accept it. When he has the missile and it's just boom. And the whole place just destroyed. No, 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 no. May God help the guys to have the right words, words of wisdom, how to encourage the church to make a difference. Amen. Amen. Where we felt we need to pray for that, and even through what we heard through Austria about child trafficking, that now on the news, they had it yesterday, how they needed more police, because child trafficking is just there, all over the place. Yes, this guy, he's, he's fighting in the war, He's praising the Lord for his wife and kids to cross the 
to, into the other country with guys waiting there to get the women into you know, slavery of a lot of rubbish and to sell the children. Hello? Where they, had, where they talked long about how they put certain things in place because of it, uh, they realized how many of that, the, what is happening there as they cross into that place. Where's God's love? May the church be there. May the church make the difference. Amen? So let's pray that God will show himself through the church because he wants to show himself through the church. With the church, there's no time for pathetic, immature offenses and issue kiss with one another. But that the church there, when it comes down to that point, that they will know how to show love in a practical way, laying down their lives for others. And we, in the same way, whenever God will wake you up, to say, God, Holy Spirit, wake me up when I must pray. Show me during the day. When must I pray? Let it just happen. Help me to be open. That I must just pray, start to pray in tongues, or pray, Lord, in those two cities where there's a lot of bombing right now in the name of Jesus, where people are crying out to you, come in a miraculous way and open up the way for them, where people are, and the other people are walking through as, uh, as uh, flüchtlinge, as uh, refugees, to get out of the city at that moment. And like where it happened, and some soldiers just started to shoot at some of those people. Etc., etc. What's the place where they were, yeah, where the guys were sleeping and next moment missile and over 50 yesterday, boom, gone. Just gone. That God will really help us to understand eternity. Amen. Now, as I, I'm talking about in this, in this time, guys, we, more and more into the end times, when we look at the book of Revelation, we see a lot of things that's going to happen. Heaven and earth that will be shaken. Things that will happen that a third of the earth's population will just be gone. Boom. Things that will be shaken and then another third. Boom. A lot of things that will happen. Horrific. But before all of that, in the beginning of Revelation, Jesus comes. And he wants to speak to his church. Before all of the shaking, the foundation in the book Revelation laid for me and you to understand is Jesus is moving among his churches. And seven churches showing certain seven types of churches or seven facets that we need to deal with in our lives that we will maybe look into later. But he, he wants to speak to all of them and make an agreement with them of what is going to happen in the future. This you need to deal with. My church my family need to look at the following before we talk further about what will happen in the heaven, what will happen on earth, what will happen when what is laying ahead. But you, in the seven churches, hello, even the seven churches, God wants to come. And Jesus, walking among his church, wants to make a certain agreement with his church with these facets in your life, with this type of church, the church going through this, through our father's home, this is what is happening through the church. This is what is happening. And certain agreements need to be made between Jesus Christ and you. Certain agreements need to be settled. Need to be settled if you're not, what is a stupid builder? Uh, uh, a foolish. <laughs> a foolish builder with your life and your future and your wife and your kids. Certain things need to be settled with. And then in the next chapter, chapter 4 of Revelation and further, God is showing what's happening in the heavens, what's happening on earth, how Jesus is the one that will give you the breakthrough. And then it's talking about the judgment and everything that will be shaken, will be shaken, will be shaken, and horrific, horrific on earth, and the heavenlies that will be shaken. And then the wedding of the Lamb. The wedding of the Lamb. And then God that will come down. And the nations will be his home. And he himself will be the light of the nations. And God will live his dream. Our father's home will be established. And that is the nations. The nations. The heaven that he dreamt about will be established. So at the end of the day, come Lord Jesus, come. Come Lord Jesus, come. Last chapter. If you can not take away 
any word of what God has said through the word in your heart. You will not destroy the word that is planted in your hearts. Blessed are you. Come, Lord Jesus, come soon. Him in his fullness, in his fullness, in the revelation at the end of a phase that's called time. Outside of the concept of time, where everything is finished. Jesus, Lord Jesus, come. But you know, that's at the end. But right at the beginning, Jesus came already. Not just through the cross, but he's walking through his church. Today, tomorrow. He will be knocking at the door of the church for intimacy. He will open up the door. See, I've given you an open door. Nobody can shut it. Nobody can close it. He will call you to establish your passionate love for him. Get back into the first love that I've called you with. But certain agreements will be made. And my question to you is tomorrow... Are you going to make agreement with a demon of lust, with a demon of rejection, with a demon of, of self-justification, with a demon of religion, with a demon of, of, of hardness of heart, a demon that will just judge others and you have the right to close your heart. You have the right to decide if I give myself to others or not. Because a throne settled from hell is established for you to go and sit on. Or... I will lay down my life and I will make sure what is the agreement that Holy Spirit is giving me through Jesus Christ. And I will stand and Jesus making this agreement with the church and that those facets in your life. And there's a certain agreement that God has with you now. But you will shake the hand, my brother, my sister. Thank you very much, guys. You will shake the hand of someone. You will shake the hand of someone if you want to or not. Somebody will grab your hand and shake it and say, if you're not making an agreement with God, we have the right to make an agreement with you. To do whatever. And that thing will make the agreement. You know, there is a scripture that says, the gates of hell cannot prevail. Against what? The gates of hell and all the plans and all the, what the enemy wants to have out of you, it cannot prevail. The gates are locked. Only, 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 if point number one, who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. On that foundation of knowing who I am, I will build my church. And based on that, when you live from the foundation of knowing who God is, when you live from that place, only then the gates of hell cannot prevail. Cannot prevail. Because the living Christ is in you, through you, on you, with you, in front of you, laying his hand on you. So when the demon, what, what hell can bring to you of depression or of negativity, of temptation, or just wara wara man, just mess up your destiny, just mess up your future. It cannot prevail if you see life, and life is Christ. Hello? God is knocking at the door. God is stretching out his hand. And he wants an agreement. Make an agreement with you. But if I choose to be disrespectful as his child, as his church. And knowing that he's putting out his hand to make an, certain agreements with you. But you can make the choice to walk away while his hand is out. When somebody do this and look you in the eye and wants to make an agreement with you. And you just walk away. That is not just not good manners. That's not just not respectful. Why on earth is a question, would you do that? Only if you don't know who he is. Now, five. Make an agreement. It's not high five. It's all five. Five points. Five points. I'm just saying, what is God talking about in the seven churches? Can you write that down? Everybody, can you write this down, please? In the five, the first of all, God is saying, see who I am. God is taking your hand and saying, see who I am. When God starts to speak to the church, this is who he's saying. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. 
with every one of the seven letters. We're not going to go into that now for the sake of time. We, with every letter, first of all, Jesus is saying who I am. So says Jesus, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the this, the that, the that, the that, the that. He introduces himself to you, himself to you. So God wants to introduce himself to you. He wants you to know who he's speaking. Are you with me? Hello? Because that Rabbi Shamar's thing well, that wants to speak to you, telling you you're not good enough and you're this and you're just a mistake and well, and that person that that's this to you, so therefore don't make an agreement with the enemy. Amen. That's the first point. The second one. Receive my encouragement, you know? After Jesus introduced himself in who he is to the church, he says, I know your works. I know your works. I know your works. Okay? Seven times. Where he wants to encourage you in excellent decisions and situations where you were in, where you made the right choices, where you prayed with sincerity, where you worshipped him in the beauty of holiness, where you gave yourself, even when you were weak, even when you felt discouraged that you just still surrendered to him where you had that song that you in the church where you worshipped him and you just you were just there with him and god says i've seen that i've seen that i know your works i know when you've made all that excellent choices the enemy comes and says, i know i know i know what you've done wrong and how can you think of being forgiven so how can the enemy remind you of your past and you not Allowing Jesus to come to you and remind you of the excellent decisions that you made in your life. Hello. God visiting his church. First of all, he wants to show himself who he is. Secondly, he wants to acknowledge and encourage you in the excellent choices that you made in your life. You with me? And then he says, number three. Understand my discipline. Understand my discipline because the enemy wants to come and, and condemn you. And say, now, and then when you must justify yourself in your head towards somebody. Justify yourself in your heart. It's because somewhere you didn't take your forgiveness through the blood. And you don't know who you are with Christ. First of all, if you know any, who he is, then you will know who you are. If you know who's your God, then you will know who you are. Moses says, whom as I say you are, you are Lord, I am who I am. I'm the, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, we are calling the name of the people. If you know who he is, you will know who you are. Are you with me? As you let me, come to know who he is. So that you don't live according to whatever the enemy and the flesh and the temptation and your past dictates who you are. Because right now you are sitting here and you are living a life based on what your past or somebody around you or some huara huara influence in your life is saying. And you are the laughing, you are the joke. You can be the joke from hell. You can be the joke for the devil to have a nice fun time. Looking at your life, eating his popcorn and enjoying the comedy. No, that will not be like that anymore in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's have the guts to, to change in that what God has for our lives, man. But then I must understand his discipline, like he says in the, in the seven letters. I discipline everyone that I love. I discipline everyone that I accept as a child. Because you are not rejected, therefore there's discipline. What does that mean? God says, I know your works, that you have patience, that you stand against the enemy, that you walk with me, that you, did, you kept my name, that you, that you stood on the word. You didn't deny me, my, deny my name. You stood in all these ways. But then he says, I have this against you. Against you because I'm your enemy. No, because I'm your father and I'm loving you. And the, the devil will come to you and say, you see, with God, you're just going to be in trouble all the time. 
with your husband or with your wife, you're just going to be in trouble all the time. With your, with your mom or your dad, you're just going to be in trouble. With a pastor, you're just going to be in trouble. You will just hear where on earth you are the whole time in trouble. That's when I interpret without the Holy Spirit. That's when I cannot interpret with the Holy Spirit. But if I allow Holy Spirit to speak to me, I can understand God's discipline over my life because he respects me as his child. And the enemy does not respect you as a child of God. He wants you to have often heart. He wants you to believe you are just wara wara around. Just wara wara around for the rest of your life. If you're a child of God, if he, he cannot take you permanently to hell. He will try his best to make your life hell. So the demons and the enemy assigned to you, the demons assigned to destroy your life, you know, he, incorruptible seed in you. You became a child of God, spirit reborn. God will never leave you, never forsake you. But while you're on earth, let's try and destroy your life on earth and make your life hell with yourself, first of all. Because when I have the issues with people, it's because I have an issue with myself. That's, that's the main thing. Because I have an issue with myself. But if you know who he is, hello? And with him you can go. And Holy Spirit can show you the excellent choices and who you are in Christ and how you found yourself in him. Then when you come to discipline, you know when you feel God is saying, this I have against you. That God is not rejecting you, but God is challenging you to change. Let's say God wants to challenge me to change. Because I am accepted. But the enemy says, because you are not good enough. Because you are not accepted. And if you change, then you are accepted. Then you are good enough. No, 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 no. Because you are already accepted. Because you are already taken by him. Because you already belongs to him belong to him that's why god is saying let's deal with these things because these things are standing between me and you and i don't want to have anything between my heart and your heart because i want you to enjoy my heart and i want to enjoy your heart as my child hello and that is eternal life can we go with that please understand my discipline number four believe my promises Every time, if God would say, this is who I am, and then secondly, I know your works. See, this is great. Thirdly, I have this against you. Understand my discipline because I'm your father. I treat you as a child. Then he says, to him who overcomes, I will give this. To him who overcomes, I will do. To him who obeys, I will give this. I will give that. And those promises, my brother, my sister, it's not just clickety-click for tomorrow. Maybe that tomorrow, you know, everything will just fall from heaven and, boom, oh, it's just amazing. But there's eternal promises. There's eternal promises. Where what you have now, and after now, there's trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of years laying ahead. And the fulfillment of his promises, even into eternity. But do you believe it? Because if I'm telling you, you know, if you go out there and you take a walk um, to the church there in the city, uh, 17 kilometers. If you take the walk, um, uh, I promise you, you will receive, each one of you will receive uh, 100,000 rand. Some of you guys are going to laugh and uh, look at my shoes and say, that's not possible. <laughs> no. I will just laugh. Whatever, whatever. Or, you, you hear what I'm saying, but it's not like you're going to do something about it. First of all, you need to know who's speaking to you. If you know who's speaking to you, you will believe his promises. Because of the, of the integrity of who he is, that when he says yes, it's yes. When he says no, it's no. When he promised, it will happen. Because why? Because you know who he is. Because you know who he is. Life in your life, you can have a life that's much more simpler if you just know who he is. Because then you know who is walking with you. You know who's giving, giving you everything. You know who is speaking to you. You know who is dealing with you. You know who is the one that promised everything that he has for you. How in Christ Jesus did he give you everything 
and also the blessings that he has for your life. Now, that's true. Amen. As you met me, believe his promises. Believe the promises that is in Christ Jesus. That's number four. And lastly, sum it all up. The last thing that God wants to say to the churches to, is to hear his voice. Hear the voice of the Spirit. Jesus is saying, hear the voice of my Spirit. Hear the voice of my Spirit. Because he's walking through the churches. But his absolute presence is through the Holy Spirit. And so that through the Holy Spirit, at the end of the day, the church and the Holy Spirit will cry out. Come, Lord Jesus, come. And the Spirit and the Bride say, come. Are you with me? For Christ to come in his fullness. But tomorrow, yes, Jesus is dealing with you. But he says, for this road of working everything out in your life, of walking into the destiny that is excellent, for that, the Holy Spirit is here. If you have an ear, then hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. You don't have an ear if you're not reborn. But if you are reborn and your spirit is reborn, you have an ear to hear. You have the capacity to hear. That's what he's saying. As jy oor het om te hoor, laat hom hoor wat die geest sê aan die gemeentes. But he says to, the, to what he, the Spirit is saying to the churches. So if you cannot hear what the Spirit is saying to us as a church, but you just have your own life here on your own, that's deception. You can deceive yourself and, and go on your own road for whatever. But especially in the end time, there's a collective hearing. There's a collective knowing what God is saying, where the churches will know what God is saying, what God's going to do. And if you understand and respect the voice of God among us. So what is God saying to you today when you hear all of this? In between, there's such a lot of extra stuff. A lot of amazing things that you can hear when we speak the word under the anointing or the corporate, anoint, the corporate anointing. And you can just sit here and for some reason, it's amazing. You know that you, when you watch that game, it's just, just possible to focus for that hour and a half. Even if there's extra time of 10 minutes, you'll be able to focus. But you, and if you watch the movie, and the movie is 1 hour 40 minutes instead of 1 hour 20 minutes, for some reason you are still able to focus. But let the sermon be 20 minutes longer, or the session with the teaching. You are just gone. You are so tired. You're just gone. Oh, man, the suffering as a Christian. To sit in such a long teaching. Yeah. Oh, don't man, let the enemy make a mockery of you. Are you with me? I'm just saying, be awake. Because your spirit wants to hear. Your spirit is hungry for the word. Is hungry for the word. So if he must last, lastly, Jesus must leave you with a sentence to all the churches. Before he explains in Revelation, book of Revelation, what's heaven and earth and what will be the shaking, what will be the, the judgment, what will happen for that to culminate in eternal hell or eternal destiny as the bride of Christ with Jesus. For that to happen, the last thing that he would want to say is, if you have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If I ask you, what is Christ saying to the church? What is the Holy Spirit saying to our Father's home? What is the Holy Spirit saying to the church in South Africa? What is the Holy Spirit saying to the church in the world? If you are a part of the end time church that understand the wisdom that you made certain agreements with God, where he came to the churches, then you will know what he's saying. It is not, you will know exactly what's happening with you, and you, and your issue, and your this, and your that, to get out of this, and get out of that. If you lose your life in the body of Christ, you will find it. If you want to keep it, and protect it, and get everything sorted out, you have the word of God against you, you will lose it. Let's follow Christ's example. Amen. And take the honor and the privilege to serve one another and give ourselves to one another. God's going to help me and God's going to help you. I believe so. I believe so in Jesus' name. Is that, is that good? 
Because we have, for some reason, we have the capacity to hear the flesh. And the more you give yourself to a certain attitude, when I have an issue with Emil, Pastor Emil, I, I, I get and, 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 and I have the capacity to hear the spirit of criticism. I have the capacity, more and more I develop it, to hear the, the demon of judgment. I have the capacity to hear the demon of self-justification against him. I have the capacity. And I develop, I have the ear to hear the devil and all those demons more and more and more and more. And I will do what the word says I cannot do, I mustn't do. I have fellowship with demons. Because demons will be unleashed in the end time. Millions of them, more and more and more. And the demons want to have fellowship with you. Because they are assigned to the church. They are assigned to bring destruction into families. Hello? And you decide. No, I will develop the capacity that was given to me to hear God's voice that's already in my spirit. That means I will develop my spirit. I will uh, renew my mind. I will get into the word. I will guard my heart. I will take thoughts captive to obedience to Christ. I will put my heart in the right place. Hello? But entertain the other rubbish in your head. You will have an ear to hear what every devil will say to you. You will just have the capacity. You come in the situation, it's just clear what the devil is saying to you. The temptation is just there. And later, if you don't even hear him speaking to you, you are just automatically in it. Because your voice and his voice is becoming one. Or, I'm getting so into the word that what the word is saying, you know, let's say something like, you shall not punch your husband in the face anymore, Darin. And now suddenly, while, when she did it in the, in the beginning and we ministered to him uh, and to her, then, then it's, you know, it stopped. But then, now it's just part of her. The word is just there. She's not even having the temptation. When he there, something to her, she's just saying, Lavi, can I make you coffee? You know? it's, just, it's just there, you know? Uh, hello, are you with me? What I'm saying. You can sit in a conversation with somebody that you have an issue with. You don't even think of getting a bad I, a thought. Your thought and the, and the demon of whatever, that spirit, it's just already there. And you think it's your thought, what you feel. But that's what, what the devil is <laughs> feeling. But your feeling is so in unity with what the devil feels and what he wants you to feel. It's just there and you believe it's you that feel so offended. And you that, that, and you. And as long as you say it's you, the devil says, yay. You, yay. <laughs> and the devil, say, the devil says, yay. He thinks it's him. The real him is who he is in his spirit, with the Holy Spirit. But he's not going to see who he is with Christ. He's going to go with the tantrums of every little situation. And then he's going to say, this is how I feel. And all the devil says, amen, that's how you feel. Don't have that fellowship with devils. Because the voices in the end time will become so much more. The demonic voices, this, the voices of deception will become so much more. That's why. The last thing to say to the churches from Jesus himself, that he will repeat, 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 repeat in every church. Is last thing. If you have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Thank you, Father. Oh God, we need your grace. I, I ask you, Lord, through your grace, in the name of Jesus, through your blood, that you wash us clean from intimacy with any other voice. God, where we created the capacity to hear other rubbish so quickly, hear things so quickly that it's just half a second and we have offense, half a second and we feel rejected, half a second and then we get into things that's not from you. Forgive us for that, my Lord, please. Set us free and help us to destroy those patterns. 
Help us to destroy those patterns that were set up in our mind. We will break that capacity. But God, show us how to develop the capacity that you gave us, and that is to hear the voice of the Spirit in the church. The collective, in the collectiveness of being together as the family of God, your voice, you want to make sure that your voice is heard. Help us to hear your voice, even as we come together, when we come together with your word. Establish that in our lives, Lord, that automatically there will be such a walking with you that your voice will become so much clearer in the days of deception, in the days of deception and false teachings and all the other rubbish that hell can throw at us. God, we choose to say, we want to know who you are. You're asking us today, who do you say I am? Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But help us through the Holy Spirit. Explain to us who you are so that we can stand in a place where the gates of hell cannot prevail against us, our lives, our families, our future. Because we're standing on the revelation of who you are in our relating, in our thoughts, in our decisions in this week coming. In this week coming, the gates of hell cannot prevail against what we will do with you and for you in this week. Thank you for that honor. Thank you for that grace that you come and establish that in our lives. In Jesus' name, so we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.